Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And to say that we've come here after a couple of days off, obviously, with it being Saturday and Sunday, there's not a great deal out there at the minute in terms of rumours or anything else. Obviously, nothing concrete has happened over the weekend, which feels weird, doesn't it? Because of the last three days before the weekend, we had a signing on every single day. So now I've had two days without one. Um, come on, chop, chop, get 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 the next one in through the door, lads. But um, but no, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been quiet. And for those of you that are new to the show, because obviously I'm aware that I've only just recently put it out as a podcast now, which you can get every single weekday on your preferred podcast platform some of you may be new to the show listening through through the podcast the weekend shows tend to be well the monday morning show when i'm looking back at the weekend always tends to be alan nixon heavy um and for those of you that don't know alan nixon is a reporter that can sometimes get his um accuracy criticized i don't think he's as bad as people make out i just think because as a person he's a bit hard work is he gets a lot of criticism for his um, actual reports, but I think with Burnley he's, he's actually quite good. If I'm being honest with you, but again, this one will be quite Nixon heavy, uh, and we're going to start with everyone's favourite Dutchman. Yes, it's that man again, Valt Veghorst. Now, according to a report from Nixon, he says Burnley manager Scott Parker would be happy to work with Valt Veghorst. However, all signs from the Dutchman's camp are that he is still looking for a move as he wants to play at the top level. So other than the Scott Parker bit wanting to work with him, there's nothing really new there. We knew Veghorst didn't want to stay. We've known for a while his heart isn't at Burnley. Has it ever really been at Burnley? I'm not so sure. Um, but in Nixon's actual report, he says Dutch striker Valt Veghorst plans to leave Burnley ahead uh, sorry, again, after his Euro finals campaign. The big target man is due back at Clarets following a loan spell in Germany and some brief appearances for the Netherlands in the recent showpiece. Boss Scott Parker would be happy to work with Vegost, but the signs from his camp are that he's keen to play at the top level elsewhere. Now, use the word top level um, you know, take it with a pinch of salt because he's all right, he might go to the top league in Turkey, but it's it's not the top level, is it? In my opinion, the championship's probably a better standard, but it's probably just English bias that right. I doubt anybody, even people in, in the Netherlands would, would see it like that. But yeah, if he does go, go somewhere like Turkey, I would argue that's not the top top level. But again, it's probably for his own ambitions and his own ambitions of being in in, in his national side in the Dutch team. That they obviously see that as as a favourable thing, which which is up to them. But yeah, nothing new. Vegost, I can't believe he's actually still a Burnley player. Um, I'm not surprised to hear that Scott Parker would want to play with him. If you look at his last few um, successes, Scott Parker obviously had the big striker up front and and a striker who can chip in with around twenty goals a season. So he might see Veghorst as that man. You could argue against that, uh, depending on, on, on how you feel about Vegos. I would be surprised um, if he stayed, so it's probably not really a, a debate worth having. But yeah, Scott Parker wants to work with Valt Vegos, but as we all already knew, it would appear that Vegos doesn't want to be at Burnley. So after a report from Nixon about a potential outgoing, and to be fair, one that we're all expecting to happen... He has also had a report of a potential incoming. And this one kind of backs up some of the stuff that we've already been talking about. Obviously, Haladke, who is a goalkeeper, has just joined recently or towards the end of last week. There was a bit of a debate about whether he'd come in to be number one. But I was saying that I'd been told the plan for him is to be number two. Even though after me watching him, I, would, I wouldn't be too surprised or unhappy if he is number one. I think he's definitely got the, the qualities to be number one. Um, but I had heard a few whispers on former Fulham goalkeeper Marek Rodak. And when I say whispers, nothing that anybody has said to me in conversations other than... Just people going, oh, I've heard, I've heard her interested in this Rodak. And I've seen it mentioned a couple of times on the Up The Clarets message board and a couple of times in in responses to, to some of my tweets and stuff that I will put in on the Turfcast page. So I have seen this name coming up quite a bit, but nothing from like a trusted source where I'd say I've heard it from this guy sort of thing. Um, but it's interesting now that it has come out. 
Um, but yeah, Nixon reported that Burnley are keen on former Fulham goalkeeper Marek Rodak, but have been put off by his wage demands. The club may revisit Rodak if, and in, in, I put this in brackets, when Trafford leaves, but Scott Parker is also keen on Bournemouth keeper Mark Travers. Now, just for a bit more transparency, Scott Parker has worked with both of them at Fulham and Bournemouth, so it could be a lazy link on that part, especially with Travers, but I do feel like the Rodak one, like I said, it's been mentioned to me a few times, off nothing official, but just in comments and stuff on the page, and now it's just a bit all convenient that it's, it's come out, so I think there is genuine interest there um, with Rodak, but I'm not sure on the Travers one, but they're both decent enough goalkeepers, both will be coming enough, uh, good enough sorry, to come in and, uh, and do a job as number one, but again, so would Ladke, in my opinion. But in Nixon's actual article, he actually he angles it about Hull City being interested in him. Now, according to Nixon's article, Hull are interested in him as a Derby counter and as are, get this, them locked down the M65. But if we've been put off by his wage demands, I don't see how Derby or them locked down the M65 could afford him unless it's not a case of we can't afford the wage demands it's a case of we've gone for what we want off you we're not going to pay that but like I said earlier if we do go back into it into this deal when Trafford leaves then that opinion may change we may just think to ourselves we're saving a lot of money on Trafford we'll, we'll reinvest it in this guy uh, but in his article as I said he angles it from the whole perspective but he says, Hull City are keen on a deal for former Fulham keeper Marek Rodak if they can match his wage demands. The Tigers are desperate for some experience after selling Ryan Allsop to Birmingham and Rodak fits that bill. However, Rodak's terms put off Burnley and are an obstacle to Blackburn Rovers and Derby Counter who have been looking into a deal as well. Rodak could come back onto the Burnley radar if James Trafford is sold. When, despite the arrival of Vaslav Haladke, Scott Parker is also keen on Bournemouth keeper Mark Travers should the vacancy come up. So yeah, it's all in there. It's just Nixon obviously goes with the Hull angle rather than the Burnley angle. But yeah, interesting, interesting. I do feel it's with the way that Nixon has worded that about us potentially going back in, that it isn't a case of we cannot afford his wages. It's just a case of he's probably asked for a little bit more than we expected. And if he is to come in as number two, potentially to Haladke, obviously I know I've said already that the conversations I've had will be that Haladke will be number two, but I guess we never know until Parker's seen them both play and, and, and tested them in the friendlies and in training that without the club guaranteeing something like that, they might just think, hold on a second, that's a bit much. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here more than anything. I'm not for one second saying that's the thought process of the club. That's just me thinking out loud. But the way Nixon has worded it would make it sound to me like it's not a case of we can't afford it. It's a case of, all right, hold on, you're asking for a bit more than we expected there. We're going to take stock, maybe look around and try and find a cheaper option. And then we'll go back in if we need to. But I think either of them two had tech, either of them two had tech, Travers or... Rodak, but yeah, according to Nixon, we are looking at two goalkeepers, obviously, with Haladka, with Haladka sorry, coming in, it's only going to be one of these two, um, but yeah, we're looking at Rodak and, sorry, Rodak and Travers. Elsewhere, just a small nugget of information, obviously, you will have seen the pictures from the club on the club's website about Burnley, uh, well, pictures of Burnley playing in a friendly against Scottish club Hearts. Well, I was told that in this game, and I believe this to be pretty spot on, that Burnley won 1-0 with Anas Zorore getting the only goal. But again, it's a similar situation to the Barnsley friendly I mentioned on Friday, I think it was, where Scott the reports were Scott Twiner got a hat-trick. It was played over two pitches around you know 75 minutes each simultaneously, so... Yeah, we won 1-0 on one pitch, apparently, and 0-0 and on, on another pitch with Anna Sorori getting the goal. But um, it's interesting because the club did put some pictures out, uh, admittedly, in the end, as I've, as I've already referred to. You can see them on the club website and on your screen now. But Hearts actually put a video out of it on the Hearts Twitter account and their, their current manager, former Everton defender Stephen Naismith, 
was just talking about about the friendly so you can get a few nuggets of information off off that sort of stuff as well and yeah i, I did see some bits because i saw this yesterday actually um off the up the clarets message board which i've started going on a lot more recently i, I do feel like it gets a bit of unnecessary stick i've actually got some good bits of information on there and everyone seems to be getting on from what i can see or oh, i did see a, a funny thread the other day about the goalkeepers that everyone start arguing so maybe not so much but um yeah obviously i was out with the family yesterday so i weren't really paying too much attention to anything and i saw some slight bits of information on a friendly i thought i'll just have a look on the claret's message board see if they've said anything and they did they said the same thing well i said the same thing this is where i got it from that we won one nil um obviously weren't paying too much attention to anything we've been out with the family went out for a meal and all that sort of stuff you know how it is and then i come back and i just seen it all on there i'm like oh happy days and then spoke to a couple of people this morning as in sunday morning and that's what they said so yeah another friendly win obviously we we from from what i've seen so far we've lost against celtic 3-1, beat Barnsley, I don't know what the score was in the Barnsley game though, but we won definitely and Scott Tra uh, Scott Twine got a hat-trick and then we beat Hearts 1-0 as well. So a mixed bag, but again, I know some people will argue that friendlies aren't about results and of course they're not, they're about fitness, but you don't want to be getting spanked every single friendly, do you? Um, as I've seen Luton, I've been struggling in some of the results, so that's going to be interesting. Um, elsewhere as well, I just want to show you, so it's not news or anything, it's nothing, just some heartwarming stuff really. I just want to quickly show you this picture that Tom Heaton put on his Instagram today. Well, they put it on his Instagram story, actually, so if you, if you do go onto his grid, you won't be able to find it. But um, then Dwight McNeil did follow it up and put it on, on his Instagram. But it's a picture of basically all the Burnley old boys, so they must have gone on a night out somewhere together. It looks like Manchester to me, I'm not in entirely sure. Heat and put it up on Sunday in the afternoon, but if you look in the background behind Tarky's head and, and Dean Marnie's head, it looks like it's going dark a bit, so I think this was Saturday night. Um, but yeah, it's great to see some of the lads together. You've got Dean Marnie there, Tarky. I'm just doing this in order from back row left to right. So Dean Marnie, Tarka, George Boyd, Barnsley, who's on crutches, interestingly. I wasn't aware of an injury for him. Uh, Matty Lawton, Sam Vaux, then he, and then Scotty Arfield has just moved to Bolton. So it's interesting that he's there um, because obviously if he'd have still been out in Charlotte, he wouldn't have been able to make it. Hence why West isn't on the picture. And then Dwight McNeil in um, some very interesting choice of clothes. Um, I won't go in on him because... I'm sat here wearing a Burnley shirt as a full-grown man, um, but he kind of looks like he's ready for bed. Um, then you've got JBG, obviously the only current Burnley player on this picture, and Ben Me as well. So yeah, fantastic picture there, and it's nice to see some of the lads hanging out. But yeah, that's it from me. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, everyone, for listening on the podcast. I can say that as well now. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think of Vegos and Parker wanting to work with him? Is that a surprise? I don't really think it is with me because Parker, like I said, likes a striker. Um, likes a big striker who bags a lot of goals. You could argue that he probably won't score a lot of goals. We're not, we're not, we're not so sure whether whether or not he can in the championship. Probably would, um, but he's he's not done too well um, at some of his loan spells recently and didn't do too well in the Prem uh, with Burnley. Let me know what you think about the goalkeeper situation as well. It's interesting to see that we are linked with two more goalkeepers as well. Are you bothered about the friendly results or you're not too fussed? But yeah. It's good to see us getting another win. Good to see Anas on the score sheet. And it's definitely great to see that picture that Heaton shared of him and all the old burner lads. But thanks for watching and I'll be back with another show tomorrow morning.